My name is Andrea D'Aquila and I'm a graduate student at the University of Toronto Cell and Systems Biology Department. I had a course in undergrad that I really found the material interesting. It was a CSB course. Um, actually CSB 426 was Stress Physiology with Dr. David Lovejoy and uh, I thought that it was just really um, it's so beautiful how all these hormones come together to formulate our personality and our thoughts and everything that we do is triggered by hormones. Um, so after doing well in his class, I decided to talk to David about potentially doing a research project there. So I did a fourth year project in his lab um, and just even fell more in love with it. Um, once I decided to do the masters in his lab, um, things just really developed from there and uh, my love has just grown ever since. So currently I'm working on characterizing and elucidating the roles of the neurohormone TCAP, um, which is the peptide of interest in our lab. So TCAP is an acronym for tenurency terminal associated peptide, and it's a neurohormone released from the limbic regions of the brain. And I'm characterizing those roles in muscle, and in its function and in its physiology. If you're planning to go into research or hoping to go into research, definitely just try to volunteer somewhere that you enjoy um, the information and you're passionate about that type of field. Um, not just something that you find interesting, but something that you have thoughts about after class and you really, really just like the information that you're being given and talk to the professor about it. If you did well after a midterm or if you show it like that you did well in the lab component, um, show them something that shows that not only are you interested um, academically, but you have the uh, capability to do well in that kind of field. It doesn't have to necessarily be an academic position right away, but if you can volunteer in the summer and then transition that into a fourth year project or transition that into an undergrad project, um, that's the best case scenario because from there, that could also transition to a master's project just like it did for me. Many times a student has applied to our lab and co cited a paper from 13 years ago. That's not what we work on anymore. So I would definitely recommend having read at least three to four of the professor's most recent publications. That would give you a good scope of what's actually going on in the lab. And if you've worked in other labs before, show them that you're experienced in it and come with ideas. If you have an idea of how something could be working or a molecular mechanism that you think is happening, don't be shy to tell them. Because even if it's not correct, they'll be happy to show that you took the initiative um, and, uh, and that you really tried to uh, make some connections. So um, I would say it's just really simple conversation with them, showing them your genuine interest. In first and second year, I was a little bit lost of where I really fit into the bigger picture. Um, I knew that I loved life sciences, but I also knew that um, the medical route wasn't for me. Um, but that's where most of my fellow peers were trying to aim towards, so I just felt lost amongst the crowd. Um, but once I started we're volunteering in some labs, and um, getting a little bit of lab research experience in the lab courses in undergrad, um, I realized that this could be something that I'd be interested in. It's just there's so much out there and really just try to expand what your, um, your thoughts. It's not only med school out there. So try to um, think about the other things that you actually enjoy and try to target that down.